So in nervous tissue, we're going to look at the two types of cells in here, neurons and neuroglial cells. So the whole goal of nervous tissue is actually to rapidly transmit information back and forth in the body. So information is going to be uh, sent to the central nervous system from the peripheral nervous system, and the central nervous system is going to receive that information. Uh, a decision is going to be made or regulation is going to be made. And then that uh, information is going to be traveled back down through those peripheral nerves from the central nervous system as far as what needs to, to happen. So an example could be moving your arm. It could be deciding uh, something like changing in respiration rate with exercise. All of that is transmitted through the nervous system. Locations where we're going to find nervous tissues in the central nervous system, so the brain and spinal cord, and in the peripheral nervous system where we have our peripheral nerves. Two cell types that we have are going to be neurons and neuroglial cells. So neurons, these are some of the longest cells in the body. These are actually the ones that uh, actually end up sending the impulses. If we bundle a whole bunch of neurons together, then that's what actually makes up our peripheral nerves. Our central nervous system is actually putting these in, in big bundles. When we look at the neuron itself, we have three primary parts. So we have the dendrites out here that actually are going to receive the information in. And this can be received from another nerve. This could be received from uh, pressure receptors in the skin, different receptors in the intestinal tract. And so this information is going to be taken in, and then it's going to be processed here in what's known as the perikaryon or the soma. Here they have it labeled as the cell body. This is actually where the nucleus and all the organelles are actually at. And then this is going to make a decision what to do with that information that comes in. If it decides to transmit it on to another cell or to, uh, so say that could be another neuron or it could be a muscle cell, it could be something that would be um, located in an organ, um, it's going to sit there and send that information down or that signal down this axon. And then at the end of the axons, we have these little things called teledendrites that we don't have labeled on here, but these end up uh, sending the signal back out. One thing is this axon is a very, very, very uh, long part of the cell. There's actually no organelles in there. It's all about electrical transmission. So this actually has a lot of uh, polar discharge that goes on and sending an action potential down. And a lot of times these axons need to be supported and that is the job of the next cell, which is the neuroglial cell. So it actually supports the neurons and specifically the area of the axons. They don't transmit impulses at all. They act more like an isolating uh, conductive membrane. So they actually help to uh, conduct and speed up the electrical impulses of the uh, action potentials that run down the axon of the, of the neuron there. They help to give framework around uh, and that protection of that, that axon. They supply nutrients to the axon because the axon doesn't have organelles and some of these axons can be as long as three feet in your body. Uh, it can be even longer than that in something like a horse or an elephant. So these really, really long axons need to have that nutrient support to actually uh, keep them uh, alive and healthy and, and keep the nerve functioning. And then they do also play an immune role. So they actually do have the ability to actually do some um, phagocytosis with them. They are way more no numerous than neurons. And so we end up having hundreds to thousands of neuroglial cells for each and every neuron. So there are just way, way more of these that actually support that um, that axon and that neuron.